Does your ball shrink? Why do you do it in the first place? Just to get yoked to look big? Yeah, and just the dude, it's like I don't know, I just it's a good explanation. Why do I do it? Just love to be hard, bro. Simeon Panda, in this opinion may piss you off, but I actually think Simeon Panda's natural. Uh. I can't say lifetime, but wow, we're going there. All right. He was the only person that actually believed me. Uh, who is natural and who is a lion piece of sh in the fitness industry? Welcome to the Shredded Sports Science you may enter, but you can never leave. I was going to call this video the fake natty fools of fitness mukbang, but my KFC was shut. Introducing Just John, Chapter 3, A Legend Reborn. I would believe you more if you hadn't just pissed your pants. Add that to the list. More on Just John later. Brandon Harding made a video exposing the liars in the fitness industry. I festered on this vitally important video for four months, and I've come to this conclusion and would like to make this statement. I don't care. However, Jason Witchrock makes a good point. Coincidence that your personal friends, Christian Christian Guzman, Rob Lipset, and Max Tuning are all natural. Having said that, Jason Witchrock squeezes his chest together between sets whilst bodybuilding.com throws cash at him. So you can pipe down, son. If you want isometric science for muscle growth, this video, just a pair of Brandons, just made a couple sacrifices to the gods, fighting off gladiators in the Colosseum. Is that the same as the Colosseum? Because for sure, when you visit one of the most incredible symbols of the ancient Roman Empire and all the amazing history surrounding it, write a cheesy post with poor grammar, bad spelling, an exclamation point, and flex. Pop quiz, who sells this shirt? Hint, he's a real life superhero and renaissance man. Answer at the end of this video. And Mike O'Hearn sells the Natty T-shirt, which is a solid base of evidence, so shut up. And the reviews are in. Oops, I was meant to leave that to the end. And so before we continue into the meat of the fake natty world, I feel as though I have to address the elephant in the room. It was a monumental day on the 31st of January in the UK, transfer deadline day. I refreshed my browser 700 times, Pompey sign, no one, it was intense. Chol soon. So this guy does claim Natty, he is an actor by the way, and his secret is his protein shake and good old elbow grease in the gym. But in fairness to Charles Soon, his profile is genuinely hilarious. This is a pectoral muscle belonging to a male bodybuilder. Charles Soon, good for a giggle. And so to the question of this video, what is a fake Natty? Well here is some fake Natty science, and no it's not me reading a list of Gymshark athletes. I'm not an aficionado of this genre, however, I do feel compelled to make fun of it. A fake Natty is someone doing the old anabolic vitamins, but stating they are Natty, and in many cases misleading consumers by projecting their physique which is associated with the selling of products and services. However, it is not necessarily someone who may be doing the old juicy vitamins, but doesn't state natty or doesn't necessarily address it. The context of their area of fitness is also important. For example, a professional bodybuilder. It's known, it's known they're not natty. It's common sense, it's not a scandal, it's how it is. When it comes to bodybuilding, I'm not the person to intricately explain the application of what these people do and how they use it. I understand the general physiology, but there are people who can give you a more educated and competent answer when it comes to the specific applications of what those people do. But in other spheres of fitness, people who don't state natty or don't address it would go in the natty or not category for debate, not the fake natty category. For example, Tommy Can't Read Research Delauer would go in the natty or not debate section. Vitaly would have also gone in there before he confessed. Jim Stepani and David Laid would go in the natty or not category, whereas Dana Lynn Bailey, Rob Riches, Simeon Panda, and Mike O'Hearn would go in the fake natty debate category because they openly state that they are natural. I think I got that right, give me a sticker. Talking of chemical ingestion, this guy took the red pill. Dana Lynn Bailey, Olympia physique champion, she claims natty, and there's a lot of controversy about that and people focus on that. However, this may be blinding you from the absolute horse that these people are peddling. How about we focus on the fact that Dana Lynn Bailey peddled the isolator fitness contraption? Because of course, if you look at her performing cable exercises now in 2020 and across her recent posts, she does them using the old bog standard attachments and handles given. And the lesson to be learned from this, if a piece of fitness garbage doesn't sell well enough, 
Let's just go back to using the standard methods. When it comes to many fitness celebrities and the products that they are pushing, those pr products are not actually a key part of their training or a part of their training at all. They're just promoting them purely for the cash. And the same can be said for supplements. And so as a serious point, if you can't tell from this group of people if they are natural, and these are very clear and obvious cases, then don't focus on that question. Don't consume your time and your mind with that focus. Indeed, what you should consider is looking to develop your knowledge of physiology, the base layer principles of muscle growth and fat loss, understanding the information behind physical fitness. Everything will then fall into place. And then there's this category, people who are open about it, people who almost embrace it, make fun of it with this trendsetter stuff and use it as a form of marketing, perhaps as a counterbalance to the fake natties, such as Kristen Nunn, who's famous on TikTok. I ain't got time for that. And Kristen makes jokes in her captions, must be the super creatine, fitness influenza, that type of stuff. Some of it I think is pretty funny. Today's forecast, partly cloudy, chance of gains. And her method is to embrace the most hated tag and use people's controversy towards her as a form of marketing and projecting herself. This guy actually made a full expose fake natty video on her. What an oil boy. She ain't stating natty. Someone explain it to this child. But why people are doing this challenge is slightly curious to me. Talking of oil boys just john again he uses the trendsetter stuff he's open about his status natural bodybuilding is a waste of time change my mind turn that arm over sport this one's a lost cause he's all rebellious like on the instagram basically he's going through the i don't care mum phase it's fine he'll get through it linked up with vitaly for some epic content what type of collab do you see us doing clearly something epic 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 i suggest this challenge but let me be in charge of the hammer now that jeff's in la what kind of video do you guys want to see us make none is the answer. I can't say lifetime, but... Steve Cook from The Biggest Torture slipped up about his natty status. Everyone was shocked. I was not shocked to see them using the exercise selection of box jumps, a plyometric movement on the TV show Trainers Sell Out. Plyometrics which work on the stretch shortening cycle, meaning this fast change from an eccentric to concentric contraction, working on elastic energy, this very explosive, powerful form of training, which is very much associated with athletic performance. The risk to this group of people who who are very much at the start of their journey and at this state of body composition is quite immense. For example, the risk of them absolutely destroying their knees. This is negligent. Both trainers, Jim Shark Dude and Erica, you guys should both be ashamed of yourselves. You guys should turn in your coaching cards very, very realistically. At one point in time, Erica had a person vomiting because why not have a morbidly obese person trained to the point where they're studying vomiting? Almost no you know, talk about proper nutrition and how to eat and anything like that. Almost no discussion about that. Way too much emphasis on the scale. Way too much emphasis on ridiculously stupid workouts. And Steve Cook is not an idiot. He has questionable friends. The incredible HK. There we go. But I made a video about his blood flow restriction video and I supported his information as it's not actually bro science. It's not something you may ever need to do, but there is a level of evidence base behind it. So in the case of Steve Cook, he knows better. He understands fitness, but he's choosing to sell out and by doing so, indeed becoming the biggest loser. And when it comes to the fake natty, the big story last year was Kino Body launching his method of exposing the fake natties, which of course was completely flawed in terms of the way he wanted to do it watch this video, but I want to pose a question to you. Is the concept of the fake natty a serious issue that needs to be addressed in the fitness industry? Or indeed, is it somewhat benign and not really significant and important when we look at the general scope of physical fitness communication? I'd imagine there'd be a mix of opinions. And so with every video, I really want to read your input and your ideas. I'm sure that for the fake natties, it must weigh on their conscience, this constant cycle of lying. And in many cases, they probably have learned to believe the lie. Surely it has to weigh on them. But a very real and major issue and very serious in its consequences is perhaps the fake natty category in combat sports, where by taking part in these combat sports within these organizations and signing up for the fights, they're signing up to be fighting naturally. And so when people cheat and take the anabolic vitamins, that literally is a fake natty in sports, such as TJ Dillashaw, who's recently made the wise decision to start a company called Clean Juice. Does he not see the irony in that? What a comedian 
and Brendan Sharp when it comes to combat sports and literally punching people in the face, then the use of chemicals is far more serious in terms of consequences, perhaps, than people in the fitness industry. And the chemical that TJ used was related to more energy output, which literally could allow him to produce more output in the fight and inflict more damage. And so I think that's another tangent that is interesting to explore and I'd like your ideas on. Literally, the fake natties in sports where damage can be inflicted which may have very serious consequences. If you want to see some YouTube weirdness, check out my last video, linked above and linked below. I'm James Linker, this is Shred Sports Science. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you soon.